The Night of San Juan, written by Lulu de Lacra. Back in the 1940s, in Puerto Rico's walled city of old San Juan, everybody knew everybody else. We neighborhood children played freely together on the narrow streets, while from windows and balconies, adults kept a watchful eye on us. It was only my lonely friend, Jose Manuel, who was forbidden from joining us. Look, Evelyn, whispered Amalia. He's up there again, watching us play. Aitza and I looked up. There he was, sitting on his balcony floor. He peered sadly down at us through the wrought iron railing while his grandmom's soap opera blared from the radio inside. No matter how hard Jose Manuel tried, he could not convince his grandma to let him play out on the street. Too many crazy drivers, too hard. The cobblestones, muy peligroso. His grandma would shake her head and say, too dangerous. Next page. Besides her fear of danger on the street, Jose Manuel's grandma kept to herself and never smiled. So most of us were afraid of her. That is, until my sisters and I changed all that. One day, Amalia suddenly announced, I'm going to ask Grandma to let him come down and play. If anyone would have had the courage to do that, it was my little sister Amalia. Even though she was only seven, she was also the most daring of the three of us. We never knew what she would do next. In fact, at that very moment, I could see a mischievous grin spreading across her freckled face as two elegant women turned the corner of Calle Sol. Once they strolled down the street in front of us, Amalia swiftly snuck up behind them and flipped their skirts up to expose their lace-trimmed slips. Si vergüenza! the women cried out. Little rascal! We could hardly hold our laughter in. We all looked up to make sure none of the neighbors had seen her. If anyone had, we would surely have been scolded as soon as we got home. News traveled fast in our neighborhood. Luckily, only Jose Manuel was watching us with amusement in his wistful eyes. Grateful for an audience, Amalia smiled at him, curtsied, and ran down the street toward the old cathedral with us, chasing after her. I couldn't help but feel sorry for my friend as we left him behind. Next page. What if we sent Jose Manuel a note in his grandma's basket, inviting him to go to the beach with us tonight, I offered. It'll never work, Aitza said. His grandma will not like it. We could get into trouble. Then we could ask her personally, I said. But what excuse could you use? Could we use to go up there, said Itza. Nobody ever shows up uninvited at Jose Manuel's house. Wait, I know what to do, Amalia said, jumping up and down. We'll tell him to drop something, then we'll go up to return it. Even though Itza was very reluctant, we convinced her to try our plan. We wrote the note and asked the vegetable vendor to please place it in Jose Manuel's basket next to the vegetables. We patiently waited on the corner as we watched. When he opened the note, he looked puzzled. He took the tomatoes he had purchased in to his grandmother. Soon, he returned with his little red ball. He had just sat down to play when suddenly the ball fell from the balcony. It bounced several times, rolled down the hill, and bumped into a wall. Amalia flew after it. I got it, she said triumphantly, offering me her find. With Jose Manuel's ball in my hand, we climbed up to the worn stairs of his pink apartment house. And while Aitza and I stood nervously outside his apartment, trying to catch our breath, Amalia knocked loudly on the wooden door. With a squeaking sound, it slowly opened, and there stood Jose Manuel's grandma, wearing a frown as grim as her black widow's dress. Next page.
See, she said, how can I help you? Aitza and I looked at each other. She looked as afraid as I felt. But without hesitation, Amalia took the little ball from my hand and proudly showed it to Jose Manuel's grandma. I wanted to run, but a glimpse of Jose Manuel's hopeful expression made me stay. This belongs to Jose Manuel, Amalia declared. We came to return it. Amalia took a deep breath, then took a step forward. We also wanted to know if he could come to the beach tonight with our family. Aitza and I meekly stood behind Amalia. The beach? Jose Manuel's grandma asked, surprised, as she took the little ball from Amalia's palm. Uh, uh, yes, I stuttered. Tonight is the night of San Juan, and our parents take us to the beach every year. Jose Manuel's grandma scowled at us. How silly to think she would ever let him go. I suddenly felt embarrassed and turned to leave, pulling both sisters with me by their arms. Wait, we heard her raspy voice behind us. Uh, come inside for a surillo de ma maiz. It was then that I smelled the aroma of the corn fritters that was escaping from the kitchen. Jose Manuel's grandma was making surritos for dinner. Oh, yes, Amalia followed her in without a thought. And before we knew it, we were all seated in the living room rocking chairs next to Jose Manuel, eating the most delicious corn fritters that we dipped in garlicky sauce. Somehow, sitting there with Jose Manuel, his grandmother seemed less scary. After we finished, Jose Manuel thanked us. Grandma thanked us for our invitation and said she would let us know. Jose Manuel smiled. Next page. When we got home, we found Mommy waiting with her hands on her hips. She had just hung up the phone with Jose Manuel's grandma. She had reason to be upset. Not only were we late for supper, but in our excitement, we had forgotten to ask for permission before inviting Jose Manuel to the beach. We all looked down, not knowing what to do or say. It wasn't my fault. It was Evelyn and Amalia's idea, volunteered Itza, the coward. Vendito, Mommy, I said. Don't punish us. We forgot. Forgot? Mommy asked. See, si, Mommy, we all said at once. We are sorry. Actually, it was very nice of you girls to invite him, said Mommy. But please remember to ask me first next time. Next page. Late that night, the whole family went to the beach, as was our tradition of the night of San Juan. But this time was special, for we had Jose Manuel with us. The full moon shone against the velvet sky. The tide was high, and the beach swarmed with young revelers who, like us, had waited all year for the night's irresistible dip in the dark ocean. The moment we reached the water, we all turned around, held hands, and jumped backward into the rushing waves. Amalia stumbled forward, Aitza joyfully splashed back, and so did I, as I let go of my sister's hand. But my hand remained tightly grasped to Jose Manuel's. When my friend and I took our third plunge into the sea, I wished good luck could come to him, and that from then on, his grandma would allow him to play with us out on the street. And as a wave lifted us high in the water, I suddenly knew this wish would come true.